This is Tools of the Podcast Trade, where you can learn about the tools and resources you can use to start and grow your podcast. Tune in each week as we talk about the help you need to remove the mystery from podcasting so you can become a successful podcaster that can reach your audience where they are. My guest today is author, podcaster, and online course creator, Sarah St. John. Welcome, Sarah. I'm happy to have you. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Sure. So before we get into what you do, could you tell us who is Sarah St. John? Yeah. So I'm an online entrepreneur. I've been doing it for over a decade, but tried a bunch of different things. Right now, I'm kind of all in on podcasting. I have a podcast called Frugalpreneur, building a business on a bootstrap budget, and have a podcast production marketing agency called Podseam. But yeah, I've tried blogging, affiliate marketing, drop shipping, all kinds of things. And that's actually how I got the idea to write my first book called Frugalpreneur and then launch the podcast with that because I was going over all the different online ways to make money or online business ideas and yeah. how to run them affordably with software. So that's kind of what I've been up to written, I guess, four books now. So, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I see your name in a few groups that I belong mm. to. So I know you're pretty busy. So that's good. All right. So tell us about Frugal Preneur. I remember reading a book when I started a business called Guerrilla Marketing. Mm -hmm. So are you a guerrilla marketer? And if you are, tell us about that. Yeah. So the book is about like the different types of online business models, like for basically for someone who's looking to start an online business, but doesn't know what they want to do. Uh -huh. And then I talk about like how to run those businesses affordably. And, and then I launched the podcast to go with that, which I've kept up I think through over three years now, over 150 episodes, just kind of showcasing different entrepreneurs who have started a business with under a thousand and bootstrapped it to seven plus figures, or I talk about different software programs that are free or affordable. So that's kind of the topic of the podcast and the book. Okay. All right. Now, when you, you say starting a business, bootstrapping a business, starting a business with low with a little money, but $5. Oh yeah. So basically the first things you should do when you start a business mm -hmm. is have a website. Well, first you need a domain name, which you can get for a dollar at one and one.com. Okay. Uh, and then having a website, which you could do for free with WordPress, though you do have to pay for mm -hmm. hosting, which can be as little as like $3 a month. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you could do like Wix or Weebly or Squarespace, which is a little more expensive, but that includes the hosting and it's, with WordPress, there's a learning curve there. So, and then I also recommend starting an email list, a way to capture leads and, or potential leads anyway, potential customers by giving away something free. Like I give away my eBooks for free, but it could be a cheat sheet or something like that. Anything really in digital format. And, but to have an email marketing platform, I use SendFox which is free up to a certain amount of subscribers. And it's really good for podcasters, bloggers, and YouTubers because you can connect mm -hmm. your RSS feed or your YouTube channel and it'll automatically generate emails and newsletters based on your latest ah, episode. That sounds um, like fun. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how you can get started with any kind of online business for okay. five bucks at least initially. And then, and then my goal is for people to stay under 100 a month. Or at least that's what I do, including software and whatnot. Right. All right. Thanks. We we independent podcasters. We are a scrappy bunch. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's good information for us to learn that we could do the basics, not just start a podcast, but have these email marketing, which is a very important thing to do and having a domain name and a website and still keep our costs low so that we could get down to business. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I see that we could do, we could start businesses and podcasting is a business. I think we sometimes make the mistake of not looking at it that way, but I wanted to ask you, why is, why do you think that podcasting is a new blogging? Because blogging is also a business. 
Mm. Why do you think it is? Well, first of all, even though podcasting is becoming more common and mainstream and I don't know, I think there's like two or three million podcasts now. It's still not as saturated as blogging, which has over 600 million. So the ability to be found by podcasting is still easier than mm. blogging. Plus people do get to know, like, and trust you more if they're hearing you for, you know, 30 or 60, whatever minutes a week or a day. Yeah. And it, so it, as far as compared to blogging, I think that is why, you know, podcast, if you had to pick one, basically, I would right. recommend podcasting for those reasons. You get more exposure. Well, and also let's say you don't even have your own podcast. I recommend being a guest on other shows, at least mm -hmm. that way you're getting access to their audience and getting exposure and whatnot. So, I mean, I recommend in being a podcast host and guest, but if you don't want to host, then definitely guest. And even some hosts are like, well, why do I need to guest if I have my own show? But I think it helps to get in front of other audiences and hopefully they'll come over and start listening to your podcast as a result too. Right. Right. Because I think guesting also give you a different perspective on hosting. I think mm -hmm. at least that's my experience. Because mm -hmm. when I'm guesting on somebody's show, I listen to how they interview, how they mm -hmm. shape their question, the whole process, how they book the interview, mm -hmm. just, you know, just all the whole process, how they do their stuff. So I learn a lot from other hosts by being a guest on their shows. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's a good point yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what have you learned from podcasting? You've been doing it a while now, a couple of years, a few years, and you seem to have quite an in-depth knowledge of the industry. What, what was your biggest challenge, one, and how did you overcome that challenge? Mm, with podcasting? Yes. I guess the biggest challenge, and this is probably true for any podcaster, is just getting out there exposure, like getting listeners ha and having people find out about your show, which I think guesting on other shows is a big contributor to help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and so I would say I overcame it in that regard, but then also like going to relevant conferences or contributing to communities or newsletters or, you know, like I have books that I give out for free, just these different ways that maybe aren't directly podcast related, but help kind of bring people back to your podcast mm -hmm. or make them aware that you have one. So yeah, I would say just kind okay. of getting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the biggest challenge was getting yourself known mm -hmm. and you did so by guesting and networking basically mm -hmm. and giving away stuff. <laughs> yeah. People love free stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thank you. What is Sarah grateful for today? Mm -hmm. A lot of things, but I guess the podcasting medium, like, and now that I can work from home doing what I love to do, like talking to people and learning and connecting and networking and building a business. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm grateful for right now. Okay. Thank you. And what do you have to offer our audience? And how can they get in touch with you? Oh, sure. So I just recently released a new book called 27 Ways to Market and Monetize a Podcast. And so if anyone's interested, or is, if they already have a podcast or are interested in starting one, but want to know how to market and monetize a podcast, I'm giving that away for free at podseam.com slash free book. Mm -hmm. That's P-O-D-S-E-A-M.com slash free book. And then as far as just getting a hold of me in general, my podcast is Frugalpreneur, which is available in any podcast directory. And my main website is the com. That's T-H-E-S-A-R-A-H-S-T-J-O-H-N.com. And I do have my first three books for free there as well. That would just be forward slash free. So yeah, okay. all, I give all my books away. <laughs> Okay. Well, we're trying to be frugal and you're, yeah. you're helping us. So we appreciate that. All right. And I'll put those links in the show notes for, for anyone who want it. Give me one or two 
piece of advice to a new podcast? Is somebody thinking about it or somebody just starting and struggling a little bit? Yeah. So, I mean, if they're, if they haven't started it yet, I guess the main focus would be like figuring out what your niche is and not being like, like, for example, my podcast, Frugalpreneur, yes, it's a business podcast, but it's specifically for people building a business on a bootstrap budget. So it's niche in that regard. And then once you figure out like your niche or your topic, when you're creating the cover art, something that like pops when you're scrolling, because it seems like when, it, and this is true, like online or in discovery apps, podcast player apps is like, if someone just scrolling, if your cover art or image can like pop from the others around it and get them to stop scrolling, Mm -hmm. then they might actually give it a listen. And then, yeah, and naming the podcast even, like being short, concise, and specific. Like like this one, I guess, is called Tools of the Podcast Trade. I love that name. <laughs> it's uh, long, though. <laughs> yeah. Not too bad. I like it, though. It's Thank you. It's very, you know exactly what you're going to get. And so, like, but with mine... Frugalpreneur, it's a made up word, even though it's pretty self-explanatory what it means. That's why I did a tagline, building a business on a bootstrap budget. So if you have kind of a cutesy name, then maybe have a tagline. But yeah, so I, those would be, and then, oh, I recommend getting like, so the mic that I'm using is an ATR 2100. Mm -hmm, me too. It's a mm -hmm. USB mic and it was only like, I don't know, 60 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. So I recommend, like, let's say you only have a hundred dollars to spend. Now you could start podcasting completely for free if you use like your earbuds and use that like as your mic and then you use like Anchor for your hosting. But I recommend, so for hosting, I use Captivate, which is 19 a month, but there's some that mm -hmm. are like five bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And then 60 bucks for the mic and then headphones like we both have. And maybe someone already has headphones, but if not, you could probably get some for, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks. But yeah, so if you're starting with like a hundred bucks, that's what I would recommend, like a mic, headphones, and a host. And then if you've already started a podcast, but just need help with like figuring out how to find listeners, how to get out there, how to grow your show, how to market it, monetize it. I mean, I kind of break down different things in that the mm -hmm. free book. So yeah, that's what okay. I would recommend. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah St. John, host of Frugal, the Frugal Premier. <laughs> I, I love those. I love when we, you know, we mix those the names with mm. Premier, like mom mm. Premier, solo yeah. Premier. I really do like that. I think it's yeah. kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you for coming and talking to us on Tools of the Podcast Trade. I appreciate you. Well, Any final thought? I would say, well, one of the things that I've always struggled with as an entrepreneur and, and advise people to kind of look out for, be aware of is shiny object syndrome, where mm. you're just kind of jumping from thing to thing or... Uh, yeah, just find that one thing and stick to it and keep going and try to okay. avoid shiny object syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Got questions about podcasting? Do you find yourself struggling with the tools and strategies that you know will help you launch and grow your show? Why not join the New West Podcasters Club where you can get your questions answered by me or one of our guest experts? The link to our next meeting is below. Sign up today and don't let confusion about podcasting stop you from owning your genius. Whether you're an individual or a nonprofit, the New West Podcasters Club is where podcasters come for answers. Link below for our next meeting.